let's draw the Bohr-Rutherford diagram for carbon dioxide. Now this is carbon, which is a non-metal on the right-hand side of this staircase. And oxygen is also a non-metal, also from the right-hand side of the staircase. When two non-metals will combine, they make covalent compounds, which means electrons are shared, not transferred like they are in ionic compounds. To draw the Bohr-Rutherford diagram of a covalent compound, I want you to draw the Bohr-Rutherford diagram of each element separately first. Carbon in group 14 has four valence electrons, but it's element six, so there are six electrons total. That means you're gonna, well, actually, we need to talk about the fact that it's six protons, because that's its atomic number, and about six neutrons, because that's its mass minus the number of protons. There's the nucleus of carbon. Let's start with that. Now, in the first shell, you have two electrons. Carbon needs six electrons total. With two in the first shell, that means you need four in the second shell, and this is the Bohr-Rutherford diagram for elemental carbon. Oxygen is element number eight. That's eight protons, mass 16, 16 minus eight is eight. So each oxygen has eight protons and eight neutrons in its nucleus. It will need eight electrons as well when it's neutral. So that's two in the first shell and six in the second shell. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now notice I spread them out before I doubled them up. That's a grade 12 thing. Don't worry about it if you're not there yet. Now I need a second oxygen because this is made of carbon and two oxygens. So let's quickly do the 8P for eight protons, eight neutrons, two electrons in the first shell, six electrons in the second shell. Four, five, six. Cool. Now, like I said, carbon dioxide is a covalent compound. So there ends up being a sharing of electrons. What you need is for each of these to have a full octet of electrons, i.e. eight in its outer shell, and that counts ones that are being shared. Specifically, this unpaired electron from oxygen can combine with this unpaired electron from carbon, and this unpaired electron from oxygen can pair up with this unpaired electron from carbon. Notice that carbon has four unpaired electrons and each oxygen has two. That's enough for the carbon to share with two different oxygen atoms. Look, that one and that one pair up, that one and that one pair up. These guys are already paired, so they don't need any of that action. I'm doing single-headed arrows because that's like a grade 12 university thing for single electrons moving around. What matters is how this looks in the end. The carbon which had six protons and six neutrons in its nucleus, still has two in its first shell. But in the next shell, you have those four electrons being shared to a piece for each of the oxygens. So I'm actually gonna draw my oxygen super close, 8P, 8N, first shell, two electrons like before. Now I want to make sure that that second shell overlaps with the carbon because they are now bonded together by these electrons. We have four unpaired electrons to worry about here and now we need to show that there are four shared electrons along this bond. That is insanely difficult to show with the Bohr-Rutherford diagram. In fact, to my knowledge, there's no accepted way of doing it. To show the first electron pair, we often put some here on the places where those actually overlap, but without contorting this so that it intersects a bunch more, there's no other way to show it. I would put those extra dots here to show that they're in the overlapped zone, like a Venn diagram. This gets across the fact that it is a double bond the first bond is the first two electrons, and the second bond is the second two electrons. Likewise, we have eight protons and eight neutrons in this oxygen, 
two inner electrons in the first shell there, and we need that second shell to overlap with carbon's second shell. We still have four non-bonding electrons in oxygen's second shell, but you have one, two, three, four shared electrons between that oxygen and that carbon. There we go. Now it gets across to people that the carbon's in the center, oxygen's on either side, and you have four electrons being shared by both oxygens to the carbon separately. Now, take a look at the outer shell of each atom. The oxygen here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Octet rule satisfied. Carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Octet rule satisfied. This oxygen's the same as that one, so I'm not gonna bother counting. Spoiler alert, it's eight. Here's your bohr rutherford diagram for carbon dioxide. Thanks for being here. All right, best of luck.